The Greeks and Persians had been on a collision course for many years. They were both commercial and cultural rivals. The Persians ruled the largest and most powerful empire in the Western world. The Persian Empire was huge. During this time, it encompassed more than 8 million square miles. It stretched from the Mediterranean Sea all the way to the Indus River Valley. In 545 BC, the Persians conquered Ionia, the Greek city-states in Asia Minor, and on the Aegean Islands. About 20 years later, the Ionians revolted. They asked the Greek city-states on the mainland for help. Athens and another polis responded by sending a few warships. After five years of fighting, however, the Persians put down the revolt. Although the Persians were defeated, Darius, the Persian king, was not satisfied. He wanted to punish the mainland Greeks for helping the Ionians. In 490 BC, Darius sent a fleet of 600 ships and a well-equipped army to Greece. The Persians landed on the plain of Marathon about 26 miles northeast of Athens. After several days, the Persians decided to sail directly to Athens and attack it by sea. They began loading their ships. Most of the Persian soldiers were aboard. The Greek soldiers ran down in close order from the hills around Marathon. After the Persians were defeated, a runner set off for Athens with news of the victory. Upon reaching Athens, he cried out Nike, the Greek goddess of victory, and then died of exhaustion. Winning the Battle of Marathon gave the Greeks a great sense of confidence. Shortly after the Battle of Marathon, rich silver mines were found near Athens. The Greek orator Themistocles convinced the Greeks to build ships. He said that an oracle had given him the omen, wooden walls shall not fall. The Athenians spent their new wealth on triremes, or warships, that had three levels of rowers on each side, one above the other. Soon, Athens had the largest navy in Greece. The Athenians planned to be prepared if the Persians returned. And the Persians did return. Ten years later, in 480 BC, Darius's son Xerxes vowed revenge. He sent 250,000 soldiers across the Aegean to conquer northern Greece. He was in such a rush to do so, he wanted to get his men there as soon as possible. As a result, his architects build pontoon bridges constructed by lashing triremes together. 360 ships were used to construct a bridge to allow the army to cross the Hellespont into Greece by foot. In order to stop the Persians from taking all of Greece, 20 Greek city-states banded together. The Spartans led the army, while the Athenians led the navy. First, 7,000 Greek soldiers headed for the narrow pass of Thermopylae, about 100 miles from Athens. There they held off the Persian army for three days. This gave the people of Athens time to flee to the island of Salamis. Meanwhile, all but 300 Spartans withdrew from Thermopylae.
The Persians, helped by a traitor, found a way around the pass. They killed every soldier guarding the pass and then marched on Athens. Hollywood made a movie, The 300, about this historic battle. When the Persians came to Athens, they found the city almost deserted and set it on fire. Xerxes then had his fleet set out for Salamis Island, where the Athenian populace had evacuated. With more than 500 ships, he was confident of victory. So confident was he that he had his slaves carry a golden throne from Persia, and he set it on a hillside overlooking the Greek harbor, so he could be comfortable while he watched the Greeks die. But the Greeks did not die. tricked the Persian fleet into sailing into the strait between Athens and Salamis. Since the strait was too narrow for all the large Persian ships to enter at once, the Greeks could take them on a few at a time. Also, since they were so big, inside the strait, it made the Persian ships difficult to handle. With their lighter, faster ships, the Greeks defeated the Persian fleet. They used the battering rams protruding from their ships below the waterline. These rams punched holes in the Persian ships. The great Persian fleet sank, ship by ship, in the channel. Once the Persians had been driven from Greece, the Athenians suggested that the Greek city-states form a defensive league, or a protective group. Since the League had its headquarters on the island of Delos, it was called the Delian League. Sparta was one of the few Greek city-states that did not join the League. The state became a League member. It could not withdraw unless all the members agreed. The League had a common navy. Its ships were usually built and crewed by Athenians, but other ships, other city-states, paid the cost. The main leader of Athens at the time was a general named Pericles. Pericles was known as the first citizens of Athens. He had a dream of Athens as the most beautiful and perfect city at the time. Much of the building that was undertaken during the golden age of Pericles belonged to money of the, of the Delian League. This led to quarreling throughout the city-states. <laughs> 